Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. This is gonna be a very, very long two hours and all I can do you guys is listen and as she's talking, put some comments on about what was said, how it's said. Um, I'm not doing any major pictures. I just want to give you guys an idea of what all they are talking about. Okay, here we go. I also want you to know that I figured out how Oprah connected up with Megan and um, how she got to the wedding. So I thought that was interesting to add as well. Oprah had invited Megan's mother, Doria, to her home for lunch and yoga. And two months of being an acquaintance was enough to earn Oprah an invitation to Megan and Harry's wedding. That's how the whole thing started. That just shows you that Oprah does her research. She found out that Doria was into yoga and she immediately zoomed in on Doria. Very crafty. She knew what she wanted in the end. Okay, now we're really going. Here we go. So the whole thing started off with the shots of the wedding and, you know, background music and all of that. And when Megan came around the corner, Oprah acted like she hadn't seen her. And the first thing she said was, um, we're at a friend's house. You don't know what my questions are. You're not getting paid for this and nothing is off limits. And then she started asking her about the wedding and was she out of body, that kind of stuff. Nothing really interesting. And immediately Diana was brought up and she claimed that she didn't know anything about Diana or giving an interview. Claimed that she didn't understand what the job was, that she had no idea what it was to be a working royal, that apparently Harry didn't prep her beforehand. She said the queen was one of the first people she met and that there was not a lot of formality and they went to lunch at the Royal Lodge and some other members of the family were present. Well, she's claiming that Harry asked her if she knew how to curtsy and she was shocked because she knew that was part of the fan for outside, but she didn't think you'd actually have to curtsy to grandma. She said she practiced the curtsy in front of the house. Fergie ran out and asked her if she was ready and she said, okay, and she went in, she curtsied and she met the queen. In the next section after the commercials, now they're showing Harry and Meghan walking around on their property at the chicken coop where they rescued some hens. And of course, they're showing the rescue dogs. And Harry and Meghan just admitted that they got married three days before the wedding with the Archbishop of Canterbury in their backyard. And then they started bringing up the bad publicity and they were calling her Hurricane Megan because um, several staff members left and they talked about the fact that she supposedly made Kate cry and she said that never happened. And she did exactly what we said she was going to do. She just threw Kate Middleton under the bus. She said not only did she not make Kate cry, but Kate made her cry over the bridesmaids' dresses and Kate was not being supportive during the wedding. She said that Kate gave her flowers and apologized and she forgave her, but what she couldn't get past was that it got twisted as somehow she had done something to Kate. She said she's not trying to disparage Kate and maybe Kate would have wanted to fix the problem, but the um, royal family wouldn't allow anybody to speak. Then Oprah brought up the difference in the way things were reported. Like if Kate ate avocados, it was so sweet. But if Megan ate them, she was, it was about deforesting and, you know, animal rights and abuse. Next section came up and she talked about how she's always worked and she was independent and into women's rights and she always used her voice and then the palette silenced her. She said she was told and given clear directives to always say no comment. And she said, I didn't mind that because I always thought I was being protected by the palace. Um, but then she realized she wasn't being protected and they were lying. The palace was lying to protect others, but wouldn't tell the truth to support her. She then talked about the queen. She said the queen was always wonderful to her and that when she went on the train with her, the queen gave her a gift of a pearl earring and necklace set and she was always warm and inviting. And she said everybody was very welcoming to her, but she said she felt very lonely because like she couldn't leave the house to go. She wanted to go eat lunch with her friends and they said, no, you're oversaturated. You can't, you can't leave the house. And she said, listen, I've left the house two times in four months. I may be oversaturated, but I'm very lonely. But she said she always did what they told her. 
The next section of the interview focused on the South African tour where they asked her if she was okay. And she said, listen, it was the last day of the tour. I was exhausted. I was fried. We had been asking for help from the institution because we knew we weren't protected. And when Oprah asked her, what do you mean protection? She said, I, we just couldn't figure out how they would negate the most ridiculous story. But the narrative of Kate crying was character assassination, but they wouldn't do anything to help. Then she dropped the bomb saying that um, the institution did not want Archie to be a prince, that she and Harry, when it came out that she and Harry didn't want a title, that was a lie. She said as a result of him not being a prince, there would be no security for him. She said there was no explanation given. Um, she said she heard that from Harry and from other family members. And she goes, but of course the best title is mom, and, but my son isn't safe. Um, he's not titled. Why isn't he titled the same way as the other grandchildren? Well, my answer to that would be because they're not in the lines of, of succession like the other grandchildren. And, of course, he will be a prince once Charles is king. Um, then she said, the reason we didn't take the picture on the steps of the hospital, it wasn't that we refused. We weren't asked to take the picture, she said. And then she said, well, if he's not a prince, there's this fear he won't be safe. So why should we offer up our baby for pictures? There's no title, no security. And then she said that there was talk about the color of the skin and how dark the baby would be and what that would look like. But when it was pushed on who said that, then she turns around and says, well, I heard that from Harry, but due to the damage it might cause, I'm not going to say who said it. I'm going to throw my own comment in here and say, I think you just damaged the monarchy. Why don't you just say who said it at this point? The next thing that occurred was they brought up the things that were put up by the press in the UK and where Megan had said things were almost unsurvivable. Well, Megan said she had a breaking point. She didn't see a solution. And while she was ashamed to, sh ashamed to say or admit it, um, and because Harry had already lost so much, she didn't want to say anything, but she said she went to Harry and said, I didn't want to be alive anymore. She was suicidal. She said she went to the royal family. She asked to go somewhere. She asked for help from senior people. She was told no, that it would be bad for the institution. She stated she then went to HR and they said, listen, our heart goes out to you, but you're not a paid employee, so we can't help you. So she's admitting that she's having suicidal thoughts and that one of the people she reached out to was one of Diana's best friends. And she couldn't just leave because they had taken her driver's license, her passport, her keys. Like she had, she had no way to get out. And of course, she got teary eyed and she said, remember the night at the Royal Albert Hall where I'm in the blue sequin dress? She goes, earlier that day, I had told Harry, you can't leave me here alone because I'm terrified of what I might do to myself. And of course, you know, I was crying during, you know, when the lights went down in the Royal Box and then Oprah plugged her mental health series that she has on Apple with Harry. When asked what the palace would think of them talking, Megan said, I'm not going to live in fear. I'm speaking my truth. And how can they expect that we would be silent when the firm is perpetuating lies about us? And yes, there's a risk of losing things, but I've already lost a lot. I've lost my father. I've lost a baby. I've lost my identity. But now people should know that there is another side and life is worth living. Next, Harry joined them and announced that Megan is carrying a girl. And now they have their family of four and they're fine. All right, Harry is sitting next to Megan. And of course, he said at the beginning when he first started dating her, he wasn't aware of his unconscious bias until he met her. Um, but then walking in her shoes for eight days, he just couldn't believe it. And um, he said he could see something happening in the same way with her as it happened with his mom. He said he asked for calm from the UK tabloids, once as a boyfriend, once as a husband, and once as a father. And he said, I left due to lack of support and understanding. He said, I didn't blindside the queen with my statement. I respect her too much. He said, I had three conversations with my grandmother. I had two with my dad. 
and dad told me to put it in writing. And then he dropped the bomb that Charles stopped talking to him and wouldn't accept his phone calls anymore because essentially he took matters into his own hands. I do have to say personally, I have an, I, I find something wrong with that story because of the fact that the queen put out a statement almost immediately after Harry and Meghan put up their demands on the website of Sussex Royal. The next section of the interview, Megan was talking about how she was at Nottingham Cottage with Harry and the Little Mermaid came on and how she realized that the Little Mermaid fell in love with the prince and as a result, she lost her voice. Harry then stated upon questioning that he told no one he needed help for Megan as he was ashamed to admit that she needed help and he had no one to turn to. He said that there's a family mentality. This is how it is. We've all been through it. But he said it's different for her because there's the race element and that he kept telling them this is not going to, you know, end well. And, you know, that he was absolutely shocked that 70 members of parliament came out to condemn undertones that were in the newspaper, but his own family didn't. He said that his family is afraid of the tabloids turning on them because they're controlled by fear because the institution survives on the goodwill of the tabloids. The tabloids are hosted at the palace for Christmas every year and um, that the inciting of racism was changing the threat level. Harry did say that Meghan was well received in the beginning. His family was very welcoming, but everything changed after the Australian tour because they compared it to the tour that Diana took with Charles and insinuated that the royal family was jealous of Meghan because she did a great job and she did it so effortlessly. You know what I'm trying to say. He said, I never thought that my security would be removed because after all, I'm Prince Harry. And Meghan said, oh yes, I wrote letters saying, forget me, forget Archie, just take care of Harry. Um, they said they had no plan. They didn't, they didn't know what they were going to do. They did not plan Megxit. Um, she says, I had no training on how to be a princess. Nobody told me how to sit cross my legs, but other people were offered that training, insinuating, of course, Kate. Harry says, um, no, he would not have left had it not been for Megan, because, but he was trapped, but he didn't know it. And he says, and my father and brother are trapped and I feel pity for them. And when asked about his mom, he said, Diana would be angry and very sad about the way this all panned out. But in the end, she would just want my happiness. When asked uh, why he wanted freedom to do Netflix and Spotify, he said he wanted freedom, but he said he, Netflix and Spotify were not the plan. That's just the way it ended up. He said his family cut him off financially. He only had what his mother left him. He said that Diana saw it coming, but he always feels his mother's preg presence. As far as the queen, he says he's spoken to the queen more in the last year than in all the other years combined. He says he has a deep respect for her. As for his father, he said his father is taking his calls, but there's a lot to work through because his father, he said he feels let down because his father went through something similar and Archie is his grandson. And he says he'll always love him, but there's lots of hurt and he's trying to heal that relationship. But he says he's trying to educate them um, because they only know what they know in their royal bubble. He said, as for William, he loves his brother to bits, but they're on different paths. And no one in the family wants to admit that race played a role, but it did. And when he was asked about who he had the conversation with about Archie's skin tone, he says, I'm not going to share it. I was shocked, but it happened right at the beginning when we were told that there would be no security and she sh maybe she should continue her acting because there's no money to pay for her. And he said, would they still be there if they had the support? And he said, yes. He said, this was not our intention when he was asked about the deals. He says, but hey, I've got the deals, a great house, a beautiful family. I'm very happy. And the last part, they're back at the chicken coop and they're talking about how Phillip's in the hospital. And Megan said, it was so easy. All I had to do was pick up the phone and call the queen to check in. As for the exit agreement, Harry said, I was hurt, but I respect my grandmother's decisions. And the decisions were made before sitting down with Oprah. This was not a punishment. They then showed Archie at the beach running around. It is the same child, by the way, that we saw on Twitter. And then when asked again about his relationship with William, Harry said, it's space. And hopefully time will heal all things. 
He said he has no regrets. He's proud of his wife. Megan says that my own regret is believing them when they said that I was being protected. She said, we're thriving and our story is greater than any fairy tale you've ever read. Harry says, of course, Megan saved him. And that was pretty much it. Now, Oprah then stated there was so much more they couldn't fit into this interview that she's got some more she's going to tell tomorrow. For me, I'm going to be going through this, pointing out the inconsistencies because there were inconsistencies in the story. In the meantime, I hope you guys enjoy hearing all of this and have a great night.